and welcome back to my Age of Empires 2 campaign run through with commentary this time. Um, once again, this is back to back from training the troops in research and technology, just trying to get a lot of these easier, less interesting ones out of the way as soon as possible. Let's get started. The time for minor skirmishes is over. We now prepare for war. The villain Longchance is poised to cross the river forth and threaten the town of Sterling with a force of men at arms, heavy cavalry, and a multitude of archers. Our newly formed army marches southward to establish our own base and attack the English before they can ready their troops. Defeat the English army and destroy their tower. It's going to be off in the west there. The scenario begins in a similar way to random map games, except we get way more resources. After you play the scenario, you should know all you need to play a random map game. Excellent. And keep exploring. Scouting is freaking amazing. That's really good advice. Let's get started. The time has come to take the offensive. The English have a fort near the town of Sterling. If we can defeat the English here, they may think twice about their invasion of Scotland. To win, destroy the English tower to the west. It's to the west. Scout cavalry are poor Turn fighters, the but they can see a great distance. You can use your scout cavalry to explore the rest of the map and find the English. Game commands. I I didn't. I mentioned in the earlier, uh, in the earlier video that I was gonna change this to spacebar. Another item's hotkey was cancelled. That's fine. I think it was go to last notification home middle button, and then go to. Okay, so it wasn't any of these since all these buttons are still bound. That's good. I'm sure I'll figure this out later, but for now I just wanted to make sure that I had Before that Before we changed. attack the English to the west, we need to build up our forces. Have your villagers start gathering food. Food and food and wood. Keep making villagers at your town center until you have ten. The more villagers you have, the faster your resources will come in. That's honestly, as like a very casual player, something that I have a lot of trouble with. Would be a good idea to build a watchtower on this hill once you advance to the feudal age. You can gain more food by building fishing ships. To create fishing ships, have your villagers build a dock in the water to the south. You can specify a location for new units to gather by selecting a gather point. For villagers, click the town center and click the set gather point button. Easy enough. So we've kind of reached the campaign where the voice triggers are few and far between, relatively speaking, which is really good. Base. You better not knock down this <laughs> right as I say that. You've got an army of about twelve soldiers. Twelve soldiers. Now, click the dock and build a fishing ship. Fishing Use ship. your villagers to build a mill near your forage bushes. Already way ahead of you, bro. So anyway, before our boy William uh, interrupted us there, we've reached the part of the campaign where fish. Oh my gosh! Fishing ship, and right-click on a leaping fish. The fishing ship will collect fish and automatically return them to the dock. Thanks, Will. Thanks. Fishing ships are also useful for exploring. Are they now? How quaint. As I was saying, hopefully. And five militia to defend your villagers and explore the map. Oh no. Hopefully, um, I'll have less interruptions now that, uh, now that all of those comment, those you William Wallace sheep? comments have. Sheep are a good song. Jeez. Food, so send them back to your town. That all of these Wall William Wallace comments have subsided. Villagers can also build farms. Build four farms near your mill when your forage bushes are depleted. Each farm needs only one villager working on it. It only can have one villager working on it. Also, fun fact, you need a mill to build a farm. So some people, they directly try to build farms right off, right off of the gate at, at, a, at the start of a random map game. It's not going to fucking work. Um, yeah, you need to build that mill first. 
So our teacher, William Wallace here, is uh, only short in a lot of aspects in this tutorial. Make sure we scout some more. This map is a lot more open than previous maps. Um, but I don't think we still I still don't think we get the full access to the entire map itself. Um, which is okay. I mean, it makes things more streamlined and less confusing for the player. I know there's nothing interesting hey, here. You. Utilizing that idle villager button to get that villager to build a mining camp so that we can start gathering gold. And uh, we honestly should have more food. So focus on building some more fishing ships here. These three sheep. Honestly, I don't really know what I'm going to do with them. I suppose I should be taking them because sheep are faster than bushes, but again, sheep ain't done anything wrong wrong to me. Why should I kill them? They help you explore. Whereas the fish are, are being obnoxious by like just jumping around all here, just waiting to be fished. Um, fish is a great source of food though. It's very, very fast. I think that uh, aside from, it, it's not particularly fast. It's just there's an abundance of fish. Um, I believe the fastest way to gather food in this game is with villagers gathering shorefish, um, but fishing ships gathering deep sea fish is actually very fast. Uh, hilariously enough, I think I actually think that fishing ships gathering shorefish is one of the slowest forms of gathering food in the game, even slower than farms. Um, so then there's that. So that's like one of the reasons why uh, you don't immediately want to start building farms if you can avoid it. You want to use your natural food sources. Uh, not be not just because farms cost an investment of 60, 60 wood, um, but also because they're actually quite a slow uh, gathering food source. So you want to utilize all of your natural food sources as possible. And that's something I really look forward to doing in this campaign because um, I feel like in random map games you always have the set, you know, two boars, eight sheep, one forage bush patch, maybe two forage bush patches if you're on a special map like Yucatan or something like that. And it's very, very straightforward as to how to use all of your natural food sources effectively. But in, in the campaigns, they're going to toss you all sorts of different kinds of situations. For example, this one, it's, it's five sheep instead of eight. One small forage bush patch, but a, a ton of fish. Like, look at all this fish. I'm going to make my ship start building, start advancing to the next age. But in the meantime, this one, this new fishing ship is going to go out and explore the water just to show you guys how much fish there is. The tower is hidden behind this wall here. Uh, they they have no military production buildings or villages or anything to, to speak of, so it's really just a matter of um, producing the correct amount of units and just going over and taking it down. Um, I, I personally favor just making scouts, men-at-arms, and skirmishers because they have archers. Um, spearmen are pretty worthless because they don't have scout cavalry to fight you with. And uh, archers you don't really need because you're just going to be fighting a few units anyway and they're not good for taking down the tower itself. So I do remember that William Wallace told us to... Why didn't I advance to the fuel age? It's very weird. Uh, William Wallace did tell us to build a few militia to defend ourselves and there they are. Um, I think it's four right there. It's not a big deal at all. All I have to do is garrison my... To oh, no. protect their villagers, you can use the town bell to garrison them in your town center. Click your town center, then click town bell. Yeah, so William Wallace just told us to ring the town bell, and sometimes that's good advice. It's, it's actually something that I find that new players do very, very often. Um, but I think it's quite bad, actually, because... You want your villagers to be gathering resources if they're at all safe. You defeated the English assault. If you have villagers in your town center, ring the town bell again to send them back to work. And the issue, the issue with the town bell is that it will cause a very, very large number of villagers to stop whatever they're doing and try to get into a building. And if it's not necessary for them to stop working, you want them to keep working to maximize your resource output. Um, I'm definitely not a pro. Uh, for example. <laughs> A lot of you will likely have criticisms as to how slow, how low my APM is. I'm mostly a first-person shooter player, actually, but 
Um, these are just like general high level tips that have made me a better player def despite the fact that I have a very low APM. Once you've gathered 500 oh, frick. food, How's myself? advance to the feudal age at your town center. Grab, 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 if you're low on food, build some additional fire. Now that you've reached the feudal age, concentrate on making some soldiers to fight the enemy. You will need at least 12. At Remember, least 12. Yeah. you can upgrade yeah. your militia to men at arms at the barracks. Yep. You should always upgrade soldiers when you can afford it. Yep. Unless you don't have any soldiers. There's no point in upgrading any soldier uh, upgrading your soldiers if you're not planning on making the proper unit type. And of course he conveniently doesn't mention that a blacksmith um has the majority of you know unit upgrades that you're gonna be needing, as opposed to just like upgrading to a fancy graphic, which of course also produces like absolutely fantastic bonuses in and of themselves. Um, let's actually take a look. So I think the militia has 40 HP and 4 attack with no armor. So a man at arms actually gets 5 additional HP, 2 additional attack, and a pierce armor. I, I think the militia actually does come with a pierce armor. Um, for, I believe, 100 food and 40 gold, which is very, very strong. So I really appreciate that. We have tons of wood, and we're not really using it for anything. So let's just go ahead and make an archery ranger. Some more man at arms while we're at it. Make, uh, make some more fishing ships while we're at it as well. Start researching some technology that makes them stronger. Forging costs 150 and gives you plus one attack. Fantastic. And we'll go ahead and knock this wall down soon and eliminate our opponents. So food is definitely the limiting factor here. Let's actually have these three villagers uh, take the sheep. Put their gold away first, and then take the sheep. Don't forget, keep exploring the map. And I, I know, I know what I said about not creating archers, but we actually have. Since I'm not used to talking and playing at the same time, we actually have a, a wood and gold surplus there. And skirms actually cost wood and food instead of wood and gold. And I want to use that food on man at arms. So I'm going to make archers instead of skirms. So, sorry about that. But not sorry. I actually am pretty low on gold now, though. So, as you can see, I've mismanaged my economy a little bit. I have tons and tons of wood collectors. Um, but I'm not really using that wood. But again, it, it, it doesn't really matter. And that's, that's honestly why I came back to record these to begin with. It's good practice. Um, typically, when I played... Oh, so he does, he does mention it. Okay. Um, so, like I said, uh, typically, like, I already have, like, 70-ish. I've played a lot of these campaigns through already. Um, and, but all of those are silent. I didn't do commentary for them. So, I was actually just kind of sitting there quietly without talking about my thought process or anything like that while I was going through it. This is actually a lot more fast-paced and a lot more fun, in my opinion. So, I'm glad that I'm doing it. And hopefully it'll, it'll grow my audience a little bit. Knock it down! The funny thing, like, when I was a little kid playing this game, I, I came from Age of Empires 1, and there are no such thing as outposts in Age of Empires 1. Um, there are only watchtowers, which shot, shot arrows at you. And, um, I was really worried that in the tutorial that the, uh, the watchtower, the the outpost would be shooting at me. All right. So they might actually have a few more stragglers there. That's about as much action as we're gonna get this campaign. I think they probably they probably have a couple of archers still hanging back. Uh, I didn't really make that many archers, as you can see there they are. Just gonna run in. I actually have someone garrison inside, which is interesting to me. Um, I haven't really seen that phenomenon before. But as as you can see, we're we're just gonna clean them up really easily right here. Back my archers away because there's no reason for them to be shooting the buildings because they can't really damage the buildings. 
I have some idle villagers, but it doesn't really matter anymore. See, my fishing fleet has already fished out the entire area. They, they actually haven't. Like, come on, guys. Here. They actually have a couple archers garrison in here for some reason. Probably to heal up after taking some damage. You've eliminated but... the English soldiers. Now destroy that tower, and our victory will be complete. Great job! And actually, I couldn't have I couldn't have done anything at all about that out of order statement actually because they had soldiers in the tower. Now that you know how to build up, advance through the ages and find and fight your enemies. You have all the basic skills you need to play a random map game, the most common type of game in Age of Empires. And I, I don't know why like the voice lines cut out early sometimes too. That's been something that's been bugging me a lot because like in the CD version it, it never did that to me. Um, but now that I think about it, going back to that tower soldier voice line mismatch, technically what I could have done is I could have waited for the archers to come out uh, after the tower got super damaged and then killed the soldiers first and then killed the tower and that would have triggered them in the correct order. But I mean, I hope it doesn't really uh, damage your suspension of disbelief or however the tutorial works anyhow. And like I mentioned earlier, of course, you see this nice tree line that's actually blocking out this wasteland out. Uh, this game actually takes place in Fallout 4. It's in the middle of the desert. This is just a little a little biome that was artificially created. And uh, yeah. I do like the efforts that they made to make the right side of the map more appear more natural though. Like they have a, they even have a deer patch here if uh, I felt like building a transport um, and coming out to it. So there you go. There there's even stone to build watchtowers. Um, and they, they provide lots and lots of resources, but of course speed is everything, right? Um, so there we go. Battle of Sterling complete. I'll see you guys next time. Let's see what he has to say. Sterling was our first great victory. Even as we held the coastline, word came in that the Sterling Bridge had been held by a Fosra Stotz, led by the mythical knight of whom so many have spoken. Now, we know his name. Sir William Wallace, the Hammer of the English. <laughs> Edward Longshanks names Wallace a traitor and a criminal. But Sir William replies that he cannot be a traitor, since he never swore fealty to an English king. With Wallace leading our armies, the men fight with renewed vigor. Perhaps the tide of our misfortunes is about to turn. See you guys next time.